strange to me that the town hasn't gone and made this determination on their own. They're, they're increasing the buffer. Now, I'm a football field and a quarter away from the wetland. And now they're saying you may have to use uh, drainage stoppage or whatever to prevent anything silt from going into the pond or whatever else. But yet, 77 from, uh, I believe it's somewhere around where Lester is, up to uh, uh, almost to the state park, drains towards a storm drain that dumps into the pond right down my driveway. And uh, there's no provision to worry about that. Plus, most of the land that you see in there is, is uh, either sloped towards the pond, so all this road runoff that doesn't get taken in the storm drain is still going to go into the pond. And uh, I just think the town ought to stop and really make a determination as to actually where the wetland starts and where it stops. Because uh, people like myself that are going to try to put a garage up a unnecessary expense as far as I'm concerned to go in and try to that I have to prove that I'm not in the wetland. You've made an arbitrary mark on a map that says this is where it is and it's not. You know I talked to Jerry and and told him what I thought. I, I, you know it's really obvious as to where the pond starts even if you come like I say a couple hundred yards from the pond, 250 yards whatever. I'm still 344 or so yards from the wetland. You know, I think a determination ought to be made by the town as to exactly where this wetland is, rather than just arbitrarily say, this is it, and anybody that lives within this area is going to be required to put this kind of expense into their uh, addition or whatever they do. You know, I, I think a little more thought ought to be put into it by the town as far as uh, where this stuff stops and starts before they just draw a line on a map. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Is there anybody else? Yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is Herbert Stroud. I live at 351 Sperling. And this matter that this other gentleman just brought up has uh, sort of made a um, little problem in my life. Um, we've been around and round on where is wetland. I uh, had a professional come in to evaluate the things that I wanted to do, and he informed me that I was not where I could do what I wanted to do as far as he, he was concerned. But there was no specific delineation of where this wetland is, and there still isn't. Now, technology today is good enough so that you can pinpoint land within 100 feet, at least 150 feet at the worst, and certainly it should not fall on the person who owns the property to uh, show the town where the wetland is. The town has more facility to do that than we have, and certainly it's costly enough to uh, uh, do the things that you want to do with the land without having to pay professionals to come in to say this is where it is and then come in and fight about it. So I don't want to uh, belabor this, and that issue that he brought up is valid the way I look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stroup. Is there anybody else who would like to address this? Public hearing is closed. Comments from the council. Councilor Winnell. Yeah, if I could just, I'd just like to respond to think out loud for a minute on those last couple of comments on the wetland. I can certainly appreciate, because I've been through it, uh, paying the, the added expense of deline delineating uh, a wetland. Um, however, I've also, in some ways, I think you might be better off, because if it's already set somewhere, it's not always an exact science, and you might be better off in having your person decide where it is first. And I, I know that isn't, uh, doesn't help you any. It doesn't help you with the expense. But uh, that's just something to think about. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you, I'm, but 
Sure. Mr. Uh, Strout, you may come back to the microphone. Let's see if I can line my ducks up here. Uh, the added expense to uh, prove where this wetland is located is really, it's, a, it's burdensome, but it can be lived with. But the town can delineate where telephone poles go right down to the f foot. They know where the roads are to the foot. They know where buildings are to the foot. How come you cannot determine where a wetland is? And if the town can't do it, why can't we put it on the state to come down here and say, hey, this is it right here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other council comment? Do we have a motion, please? Council Groff? You just stretching? You know, I was, well, I'll certainly make a motion that the amendments uh, mm -hmm. uh, delineated by the town planner, uh, that's what we're talking about, right? Uh, the approved? Oh, the changes in the ordinance. The proposed changes proposed to the changes. current ordinance, okay. I'll second. Any comments? All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Six to one. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Councilor Reid? Uh, when GIS is up and fully operative, will we uh, be able to have a better um, delineation of the wetlands? Ms. Amira? No. Uh, the GIS system is based on the existing information that we have available. Uh, the, the best benefit of it is it allows us to combine information in a way that we can't do now without putting in a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, and, and I've spoken to Mr. Strout, and I actually enjoyed our conversation this afternoon, but as he was talking about being able to delineate down to the foot where roads are, I was thinking about how much it cost to put this map together. Uh, this map, which has the road center lines drawn in using a GPS unit uh, is within three, within one meter of accuracy, which is three feet. Um, GPSing the roads, rubber sheeting the map together was a $20,000 plus project. Uh, certainly, we always have people coming in and we tell them, we, this is why we have the note at the bottom here that says that the resource protection boundary lines have to be field verified. And the reason we do that is because this is the best information we have available on a town-wide scale, and it comes from the Cumberland County soils maps. Uh, certainly, uh, we could use better information, but it's very expensive. Uh, and at any time that the council would like to up upgrade the quality of our soils information, uh, it's certainly something that can be done, but it's just very expensive. Uh, what we have been doing in, in the Assessing Codes Planning Office is that uh, just the boundary line, if you scale it out on one of these zones, scales out to about 75 feet wide. Uh, so that can be a really important amount of land for people when they're trying to decide whether or not they're in a critical wetland buffer and whether they can add to their garage. And what we've done is we've asked people to provide us with soils information, delineate the boundary. Uh, we give them the names of people who have done it before who are very familiar with the CAPE ordinance. Hopefully they won't have to pay as much as someone who doesn't know what the ordinance says. Uh, the one benefit of doing it this way is that if we just use these lines and we didn't let them move along the soils, we'd be forcing people who may not have wetlands on their property but are mapped as wetlands on this map to go through a wetland review process and no one benefits in that. The planning board feels foolish and the applicant has to go through expense and everybody knows there's no wetland there. Conversely, uh, we would be stuck in a position where if there's a wetland in this area right here, 
um, and it's not mapped as a wetland, we wouldn't be able to protect it as a wetland, and the town has struggled with that, um, especially in, in a project in 1990. So certainly this continues to be an issue, and, and we're not happy with having to tell people they have to spend extra money. Uh, the one benefit of spending the money, as Council Linnell pointed out, is once you have that map, soils don't change. And um, you, you're guaranteed that you're not going to run into a tidal problem later, and you're not going to run into uh, additional costs if you want to do more expansions in the future. Thank you. Item number 158 is a request for a proclamation designating inhalant and poisons awareness week. Mr. McGovern. Yes, uh, this particular request uh, came in from one of the co-chairs of the CAPE Coalition, and it recommends that you endorse the legislation pending on inhalants. Uh, that was reported out by the, by the Committee of the Legislature dealing with this is issue today with a unanimous opt-to-pass recommendation uh, with a whole series of amendments that representatives of the CAPE Coalition were included in the review and were, also, were predominantly, though, the, the actual drafting uh, was prepared by a uh, district attorney from whatever is Hancock County, is that Ellsworth? From uh, Michael Povich, who is the district attorney there. But uh, it has gone through a process, and what it intends to do is raise concern about this important issue uh, by passing this resolution uh, as well as uh, endorsing that legislation. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion, please. Council Linnell? Yes, I, uh, I, move, I move that we uh, adopt the proclamation. Thank you. Oh. Would you like to hear the whole thing? It's up to you, sir, as yeah. your motion. Yes, I'll do it. Thank you. Um, whereas inhalant abuse can cause sudden sniffing death, permanent brain damage and psychosis, loss of memory, hearing and sight, and significant damage to the heart, lungs, kidneys, liver and bone marrow, and whereas the agents of inhalant abuse are myriad legal household, school, and industrial products readily available to all persons regardless of age, and whereas nearly one in five young Mainers in grades 6 through 12 have abused inhalants at least once, and such abuse is expected to continue and increase, resolved that the school board and town council of the town of Cape Elizabeth, Maine, supports the passage, support the passage of legislative document number 305, an act to prohibit the inhalation of toxic, va toxic vapors for effect during the 118th session of the state legislature, and further, and further proclaims that the town of Cape Elizabeth, Maine, joins the nation in rec recognizing the week of March 16, 1997, as National Inhalant and Poisons Awareness Week, and encourages all residents to become involved in increasing awareness of this silent epidemic. Thank you. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Any discussion? Councilor Reid. Uh, just a comment. Uh, in watching the school board last night, the school board approved this uh, unanimously as well. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilor McGinty. I'd just like to commend uh, Representative Marvin and also uh, Kevin Sweeney and the entire Cape Co Coalition for pushing this issue forward. Thank you. Anybody else? All those in favor of the motion. All those opposed? 7-0. Thank you. Item number 159 is a proposal to transfer funds within Department 715 Capital Improvements from the Refuse Disposal Project to the Library Entrance Project. Mr. McGovern? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. The, in this year's budget, there was contained a proposal to reconfigure the library entrance that would bring the circulation desk from the individual sides of the library, the Children's Library and the main uh, library building into the center entrance area. Uh, the purpose of that is to, is to, a uh, whole lot of reasons. One is to concentrate uh, services, uh, more, more reflective work within the individual libraries, and to bring the circulation, the busyness uh, out into a, an area of the library where, where folks aren't trying to study and, and do other things. Uh, also, it does provide very important security for the library as well. The original plan was simply to put the desk in the middle there. Uh, fairly easy project, but we then get into some ADA issues and some fire code issues, and it developed we needed to put a small addition onto the front of the building, a very small one, in order to accomplish this. 
uh, in speaking with the architect today, he, he you know, we, we were again discussing, you know, why is this so much money? And he mentioned that as one, someone in his office was looking at it, it's that you have a little bit of everything in this project. You have a, a little bit of woodwork, you got a little bit of plumbing, you got a little, little bit of a sprinkler system, you got a little bit of an electrical system, you got planning board site plan approval, which we needed to go through. Uh, it, it just, uh, you know, for a very small project, you know, it, it cost $30,500 for uh, the actual construction work to occur, and a total of 40000 when you look at the design work and the construction oversight and contingency for a project. It, it's, it is a lot of money for a very small space, but we feel uh, that it will uh, really serve the library public uh, and visitors to the library for many, many years to come. Uh, we are fortunate that we do have some funds uh, remaining uh, in a number of different accounts. Uh, 10000 that was appropriated for this purpose originally before we thought we were going to have to put the addition on and we thought we were going to have to get into all those uh, uh, facets of the project. Uh, $10,000 was left from uh, providing accessibility around the town hall here. And we also had $50,000 that was left in the brush and demolition account of which we're proposing 20000 uh, come from for this purpose. So it's a total of uh, 40000 uh, we're recommending, actually a total of 30000 recommending to be transferred, uh, 10000 from the town hall walks account and 20000 from the brush and demolition area account with 10000 in the account already. Thank you. I'd like a motion, please. And Jay Sherman, the libra librarian, is here. Should you have any detailed questions about how this all works? <laughs> Council Cogsell. I move that we transfer the funds needed for the library entrance reconfiguration. Uh, Second. Questions, comments? All those in favor? All those opposed? 7 0. Thank you for your time this evening, Mr. Sherman. <laughs> Item number 160 is a proposal to allocate funds from the refuse disposal project to replace the bottle shed and provide shelves for books within the swap shop building. <laughs> Mr. McGovern. <laughs> Thank you again. Uh, we've been very, very fortunate with our recycling efforts. I, I see a former uh, active member of the recycling committee in the audience. Uh, they, we received the governor's waste reduction award a year or so ago. Uh, for recycling, the citizens have really uh, caught on to this. Uh, some of the different projects in, in, that have been involved, particularly the one is the bottle shed, which I think everyone knows its success. Rosemary Reed brought that proposal to the council several years ago, and then was also nice enough to donate a uh, uh, a bottle shed that was her old garden shed. Uh, it, it has served a good purpose for a couple of years, but it is really inadequate as to size. And we, we do hope to upgrade that to provide for a 16 by 24 garage on the site, which will be more than sufficient for the groups to work and to store their bottles. And the citizens won't be having trouble all the time wondering where they're going to put the bottles when they get up to the shed when they can't fit them in the door anymore. Uh, we're also proposing, uh, similarly, the, the book swap up there is an old, uh, we go from a garden shed to a dog house. Uh, that it's a dog house that we uh, picked up when we bought the community center property. And again, that's real tight, and it's difficult to see the books, and it's not bright. And due to the efforts of uh, Carol Fritz and Joanne Daigle, Mandy Garmy, and others, we received a, a grant several years ago to build a swap shop building. And that building is now there and is being used. And one thing we've identified is that on one side of that building, it being so bright in the doors, we could build in some shelving for the books. So that, for one thing, we think it would bring a lot more people into the swap shop to see what's going on. And, and use it, and second, it, it just brings that much more accessibility to the books. Uh, so the recycling committee has looked at this. Uh, they, they like the idea uh, it is a way of encouraging more recycling. And we had, as I mentioned, 50,000 left in the, the brush and demolition area account. So I would see this as the last component of uh, finishing that project up there by uh, spending 15,000 to construct the replacement bottle shed and to build the new shelves in the, the swap shop building. Thank you. I'd like a motion, please. Council McGinty. I move that we allocate $15,000 from the brush and demolition account uh, to replace the bottle shed and to provide shelves for books within the sh swap shop building. And do you want, and do you want to re for the remainder of that 20000 to go into surplus?
Was that the remainder? Don't mention any dollars. I believe you got to subtract the 15 from the 20. It's right after the first bold. And at the uh, five thousand. Remainder. The remainder. And the remainder to lapse into surplus. Thank you. Is that the second? Second. Intent? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Questions, comments. Councilor Jordan. I got a question. As far as uh, didn't quite understand it, when you're putting the books into the swap shop building, is that what you're saying? Are you dividing it off, or are you just going to oh? No. Everybody's going to get in there when they're in the swap shop. And I just pity the ones that take care of the books and line them up and put them out and put them up and place them in an orderly manner. Don't come back in a little while and tell me you've got to hire somebody to do it because I can visual it right now. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else? All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? 7 0. We had one item presented at our seats this evening a request from, a, from 9X for a poll location. This could be on the agenda if somebody would like to propose it as number is item 162 taken out of order. So moved. Second. All those in favor of taking this out of order? All those. Opposed to the motion, I'm sorry. <laughs> Seven zero. Mr. McGovern? Ms. Lane? So, somebody. Certainly. <laughs> Before you, you do have a poll location request from 9X. Um, this request came in after the council deadline, the first business day of the month. As I always do, I, I contacted um, 9X to, to tell them that they had missed the deadline and that the regular next council meeting to get this on would not be until April. Uh, the manager of the right-of-way, Mr. George Belcher, indicated that it would interrupt service for virtually a five-week period. I told him that I would request that the council take it out of order. Um, he really appreciated that, and I said the worst-case scenario it would be brought forth again in April. All right. Thank you. We have a motion on the request, please. Will we grant the permission? Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? 7-0. Thank you. It's very likely that the council will vote to go into executive session. Before we do that, we would like to entertain any comments from anybody in the citizenry, in the audience this evening, on anything that was not on the agenda tonight. Is there anybody who would like to take avail, avail of that opportunity? Yes, sir. Your persistence is terrific. <laughs> Regarding the uh, swap shop, yes, sir. Uh, I wonder what the uh, feeling would be about expanding that a little bigger and allowing flea markets to be held there. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, people would like to dispose of. What a perfect place to get them all together. And, well, get it. Uh, get rid of stuff at the same time. I personally have a lot of radio stuff that I know if somebody knew there was a central point where they could come and look at it and pick it over and all that, I would be happy to unload an awful lot of valuable gear to some people. And I suppose a lot of other people have the same ideas. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If, I, if I might respond to that, we do have an issue with the <coughs> yard sales all over the place sometimes and you know there are some people who live on streets that they don't have yard sales this might not be the location for it, but perhaps we could look into with the recycling committee maybe having a community flea market maybe on the school grounds or somewhere where there's a lot of parking where it wouldn't impact neighborhoods you may have started something <laughs> you have to go back to the microphone i'm sorry this is part of the exercise program these things are held throughout the state uh, quite often, this radio business, and uh, they charge a fee to come to the, uh, to come into the thing, and some of them 
uh, charge a commission on the sales, which would probably help to defray the cost of the building, if, if anybody wanted to get into that end of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Terrific. Anybody else from the public? Councilor Cogsell. Yes, I move we uh, enter executive session to discuss a personnel matter. Second. Thank you. Councilor Linnell. Can we amend that to uh, include uh, upcoming negotiations, to add to that upcoming negotiations with the police bargaining union, unit? I'm offering that as an amendment. Mr. Consul, to accommodate that. Do we have any material that the manager wants to present to us on that issue? I, I had a brief <coughs> discussion with Councilor Linnell earlier this evening who indicated that he wanted to raise an issue that is a topic within cl uh, the collective bargaining and we are meeting with them tomorrow, and if he has information he wants to offer, uh, I think it would be appropriate to discuss in an executive session. I'll amend my uh, motion to include negotiations with police bargaining units. And the second? Sure. Accept. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? 7-0. We will be in executive session. No decisions will be made in executive session. The council will come out of executive session. I am not expecting any decisions to be made this evening. So we will bid you good evening. Thank you for being with us. Good night.